Okay. Can I ask you to do something? And then I'm going to jump into the scripture and, and you'll be amazed. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible. So it's time for Bible story. Um, so just before we do that, can you help me get back into your note and just don't overthink it. Just keep it very simple. What two simple things about you make you unique? Just two. I'll give you an example. I can talk well and I can write well. Right? Don't repeat what I just said. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know how many, you know, you need to be very observant. Mike Kenny, that's the guy, yeah, that gave the talk. What was he? A pro wrestler, right? But did you notice he's a huge and amazing public speaker? How does it happen? <laughs> there was no, um, you see, did you notice that? Just straight on. Yeah? Did you wonder how that happened? Okay, you didn't wonder. It didn't, it didn't strike you. That is a wrestler, by the way. How is he talking this way? Okay? There was something he said. I hope you didn't miss it. He said, once someone is turned up, it's difficult to turn them down again. So you just carry that into every other area of your life. So simple turned on wrestler, and then they give you the role of a fake security guard. <laughs> you do it with the same zest and style. Yeah? So if you are crappy, they give you something to do and you are crappy. It's because you're a crappy person. It's not because that is not really, that's not what I'm cut out for. You are lying. You are lying to yourself. You are crappy. Yeah? Because if I'm excellent in one area, <laughs> it affects every other thing. It's about quality of life. Yeah? So I carry it. You give me an assignment. Even though it doesn't come natural to me, I don't want to fail me. I want to do it good. That's how it happens. Yeah? So I want you to go to your note and just make a note to yourself, identifying two simple things. Remember we say simple is special, right? Simple is special. Simple is two special. Two simple things um, that make you different, right? What you know you are good. This thing comes natural. Don't pick some big thing. Just, you know, you know how he built his persona? Did you listen to him? Now, if you listen to this with a different, if you are in branding, is there anybody that's into branding here? Okay. If you are in branding and listen to this, you are branding now. If, if you listen to this with the ears of a branding person, you will pick loads of lessons. How do you build your personal brand? Did you notice all the little, little elements? Okay. Yeah? He found he can draw. And therefore, he started designing his own costumes. And he made sure one was different from the other for each wrestling match. So, what does he do? People start looking forward to another design when you enter the ring. <laughs> he found he was a funny kid. He could make, you know, crack jokes and all of that. It turned it into a brand, right? So you've seen some of those wrestlers. They look like devils, you know. They look like they will tear you apart and they will come into the ring, you know, uh, um, um, screaming or, you know, shrieking or whatever. He decided to be that funny wrestler. <laughs> so he's coming, he's dancing into the ring. And kids love those kind of people. And people started, he said he found it was more, he was better as an entertainer than a wrestler. Yeah? 
So on and on, he built that brand. Okay, so go back to your note. I'm saying all of this thing to just say, get you to write something on your note. <laughs> so write out two simple things. Please don't, don't say he won't come and check so you won't write. That's how you self-sabotage. Just do what I've said. Now bend down, stop looking at me, look at your note. Are we done? We're done. Okay. Just to be sure we are done. Um, you know, people don't volunteer for certain things, right? I'm going to give you a chance to volunteer to tell me what you wrote. And um, when I'm done, people will say, he can never get to me. Um, <laughs> I'll just randomly pick two other people. And I normally know how to pick people. Those who start avoiding my eyes. <laughs> that's, that's how to pick them. All right. So who wants to volunteer? Yes. There's some guy right at the back. Uh, you put down your hand now. If you stand up. Uh -huh. Good. Come closer. Run, 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 run. Or give me a microphone there. Hmm. Praise God. Um, making people happy and building capacity. Sure. Now, nah, these, these things are heavy. Are they simple? <laughs> but I love that. It's making people happy. So that's another entertainer, right? All right. Who else wants to try? Ah. Okay, there's a bluish female hand with white trimming, blue and white trimming. Have you identified her? I just saw the hand up. Okay. You see how far my eyes can go? Uh -huh. All right, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, things I do that makes me unique is meeting new people and engaging in meaningful conversations with them and watching out for other people genuinely. Okay. Let's clap for her. But you see, I want to things that are simpler. One of my guys says, the simple thing about him is that he's always smiling. Like you. Kai. So adorable. Please give her the microphone. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. Okay. Um, the two simple things I, I know I enjoy doing. I love smiling. And I enjoy gisting. Wow. This is it. Let's clap for her. This is it. Eh? You can actually create a blog called gist.com. <laughs> That's a business idea, by the way. <laughs> Free consulting. <laughs> Always smiling. I love gisting. Eh? Hmm? Can call it gist and smile.com. Don't say away. Write it down. <laughs> We're talking about getting turned up. <laughs> eh? Gist and smile. Eh? Can you imagine a company name like that? Gist and smile. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, one more person. Yes, people are raising hands here. Uh, oh, yeah. Give him. Where's your microphone now? Uh -huh. Is I can sing and I can write songs. Okay. This is very simple. He can sing and he can write songs. Let's clap for him. Amazing. 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 Okay. Okay. Are you comfortable where you are? Now, we're going to keep it very simple. 
I told you, I screamed yesterday, so I don't want to, I want, I want to just enjoy myself. Just laugh and all of that. Okay. So, those that think they have escaped it, my eyes are running to and fro, this whole earth. Black suit. You are past him now. Uh, yes, give him. Did you notice why I called him? Give him the mic. Okay. It's two simple things I wrote down. I can give easily. And then I can also be compassionate easily. Mm. He's a very compassionate person. Now, before I go, you have to bless me. <laughs> Amazing. He gives very easily. And you see the two things are tied together. Did you also notice the smiling and the gisting are tied? Yeah. Uh, it's just that your face was just looking very serious. In fact, almost expressionless. You know. And it got me worried. And my worry made me call you. Okay, who else uh, am I going to call? No, this is my own. Know the secret. The secret, if you don't want me to call, you just be looking at me. <laughs> if you avoid my eyes, then... I know you're a suspect. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. The two things I wrote down is talking and logical thinking. Wow. <laughs> I love thinking. You I'm love like thinking. Thinking. Then talking. Talking and with talking. people. Yes. Wow. This is huge. Have you done a program in, uh, have you done Toastmaster? And you say you love talking. <laughs> eh? Do you know Toastmaster? You don't know Toastmaster? All right. Let's clap for her. She loves talking and thinking. So which one do you do first? Do you talk before you think or think before you talk? <laughs> Sorry? You think before you talk. I just want to be sure. You know there are people that don't think before talking. <laughs> they, they talk before they start thinking. All right. Okay, great. So, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, I, I, by the way, I'm just going to read it from the Bible, so don't, uh, nothing complicated. All right. All right. So, let's turn to, let's turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter number four. And I'm going to read some five or six verses from there. Uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter four, verses four to nine. Mark chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. All right? Let's see what we can do with this. Mark 4, 4 to 9. All right. Please listen to this amazing story. And in our Sunday school, what did we call this one again? The parable of the sower. All right. So let's hear the parable of the sower. I've not read four. All right. So this is a parable of the sower. And as he, the sower, scattered it, that is a seed, across his field. Some, did you change the translation? Okay. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath. Please take note of this. They fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate it. Go on. Other seed fell on shallow soil. Please take note of shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. Go on. 
But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Next. All the seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so they produced no grain. Still, all the seeds fell on fertile soil and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been Planted. All right. I wanted to say, here we come to the end of the reading of the word. And then you will say, thanks be to God. All right, so look up here. Now, I have gone through this. Listen very carefully. I have gone through this parable a couple of times. So a sower goes and starts spreading seed, right? Let me ask you a question. If we took the seed that fell among thorns and we picked it out and went and put it on the fertile ground, will it be choked? <laughs> Did you hear my question? That seed that fell on the pathway and the birds ate it up, if we picked it and put it on the fertile soil, will it be picked by the birds? Okay. The seed that fell on a rocky, shallow ground that had underlying rocks, if it were planted on the fertile soil, will it die? No. So where is the problem? So the first thing you notice is that there is no problem with the seed. Abi, any seed God gives you is good seed. God, God, God doesn't give bad seed. <laughs> All right? Whatever gift, whatever grace, whatever calling, whatever anointing, whatever God gives to you, go back to those simple things you talked about. You, you know, the problem is that sometimes we don't even recognize those things as giftings. It's not everybody that can smile. I'm telling you, if we do a census in this room, there are people that count their smile. No, it's true. They have the quantity they can dispense in a day. So their faces are straight, very straight. And you may not recognize that as something good. Yeah? Whatever God gives us is good. Every good and perfect gift. Where do they come from? They come from above. All right? He gives it. He's a father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All right? So, it means that all you need to grow 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, they are locked in some simple seed somewhere. And that's why it was good for us to start this conversation with my Kenny and then look at some of those simple things we often ignore. I've sat down to do some inventory of my life and I'm asking myself, what are the things about me? I've had those exercises over and again, right? What are the things about me, simple things about me? And they are seeds God's given. Okay, so you find out that the problem is not with the seed. So where do we find the problem? They are in multiple folds as we begin to have this conversation. So the issue really is about the soil, right? And if you think about the soil also, it is not so much about bad soil or good soil. <laughs> because that's the other thing we think about. It's not about bad soil or good soil. It's about suitable soil or unsuitable soil. Can I tell you why? Because there are certain seeds that can do well on a shallow soil. If they don't require too much root. 
Is this making sense to you? That's the truth. That's the truth. So again, it's not about bad soil or good soil. It's about appropriate soil. Every location in Nigeria is good. For those who have seed, appropriate for each location. Did you hear what I just said? That's the truth. John the Baptist sat the headquarters of his, uh, his ministry in the wilderness, in the desert. Yet, what happened? The city came to the wilderness. All right? So it is about fitness, not about being good or bad. Okay? Now let's push the thought further. And I'm going to show you, each one of us has been given seed. These are the four ways we apply the seed. And that's where the issues are coming from. Right? I will show you. So there were four kinds of soil. Uh, I think Bill Akone has done a very massive work on, what did he call that his book? There was this book he wrote where he, you know, explains this parable of the sower. So he talks about them as hearts. That's actually the context Jesus used it in scripture. Hearts. So they are the roadside heart, the shallow, shallow soil heart. There's the thorny heart and there's the, the fertile heart. But we're trying to flip this to help you understand how to manage the seed in your hand. Yeah? So I'm going to talk to you about four kinds of seeding we do with the seeds God has given us. So please, have in mind that simple thing. Your smile and your gist. Hello, sister. Your smile and your gist. And we're going to x-ray. And by the way, you're thinking and talking. Yeah? Have that in mind because it will help you you know, really understand this, right? Have that in mind. That simple gift God has given you, these are the various ways we deploy them. Number one is what we will call the roadside seeding, the roadside seeding. And what does this mean? It is when God has given me seed. So I have this little gifting in my life, um, some seed in my life, some grace, some anointing, um, your singing and writing of music. And by the way, is it easy to understand? Does it make sense if we say that there are people who are good in music that are sitting here and not here? Is it possible? Is it possible? And not that they are using it somewhere in another worship team, but they use it at home. Okay. Thou sayest. Right? So look at what the roadside seeding, what it is. It is when you treat your gift more like a hobby. More like something that you just, I mean, um, once in a while, occasionally, you know, it, 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 it blots up and then you, you use it and then you move. It's almost accidental. All right? So like somebody has said here, so you do your biggest music concert in your bathroom. Yeah? And there are crazy people here with crazy, what do they call it? Culinary, co co what? Help me now. Culinary what? One person should say it now. Why are you, child? Culinary. Uh -huh. So I've learned English now. Now, there are people with amazing culinary skills here. But the best way they use it is just to fix a meal for themselves, their husband, and their children. Right? I have, I have somebody that you, used to be my, ex, my colleague, and oh my God, this girl is crazy. In fact, she creates menus. I, 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 is that no? That's not what they call it. She actually, she actually creates food. She comes up with new recipes. Uh -huh. I should just be expecting. I'm telling you, I'm, she's in Lagos. I have called her severally. I say, sister, this thing you are carrying, eh? This thing you are carrying. 
It should actually be a restaurant somewhere. She will smile and say, well, you know, I've always been thinking about that. That is a roadside pathway um, a city. She's carrying this gift. She's carrying this gift. And it's accidental in its manifestation. It's accidental in deployment. Very accidental. All right? Until you are asked, sometimes you don't even realize it is there. You just realize, oh, I smile a lot. How can we convert this smile into something of value to you and to those around you? How can we monetize this thing? <laughs> Is it making sense now? Right. Now, I'm not by any way saying that every simple thing about you that you must convert it to money. But it's the principle behind it that I'm after. Right? So, check what God's given you. You have a writing skill. Right? You know that when you write, people want to look at it. How are you deploying this? Is it a roadside thing that it just comes up once in a while? Right? It's almost just emotional. When, when you feel pumped up with emotion, you release it. And then when you don't feel, it just goes back, you know, to where it has always been. So, please check what you are doing with that simple thing. And number two, it talks about the, it talks about the one that fell on a shallow ground. On a shallow ground. Very shallow. And it actually sprouted. It came up. Right? Now, you would start thinking about some of the simple things in your life. You know, sometimes we, we have this gift. So you have the gift of, um, you know, music and writing it and so on and so forth. And then um, sometimes you get the big stage and just do something. But you don't go beyond it to now build sustainability around it. What kind of structures that can now carry this for the long haul? Am I making sense to you? In fact, they have called you. They noticed that you can talk a lot. And then they brought you. You did MC. Okay? Your friend was doing birthday. And they just said, uh, what's your name? What's your name? Sandra. Uh, and your friend just said, Sandra, you know you can talk. You know you can talk well. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come and um, be the MC for this birthday something. And you did it so well. People were amazed. Right? People gave you thumbs up. All right? But because there is no adequate soil under it, even though you have used it, in fact, sometimes it's even possible that you did it and they paid you. How many of you have had to deploy your skill and they paid you once? They gave you money once for it. And they didn't give you again later on. <laughs> right? It is not, you've, you've, you've got something two times. You see? You see? You know that if they gave two times, the possibility of a third and a fourth and a fifth ad infinitum is very high. Right? But you see, We've not tried to build a structure around it. Put things in place to make it have a life of its own. Yeah? Once you don't do that, let me even talk to you. Some of you um, have even created a business. You do chinching. You fry chinching. You fry this and fry it. I met, I met some woman in the north, and she was talking to me about her business. She, she does this. She does this. She supplies and so on and so forth. You see, Part of no depth of soil is I ask a woman, does this thing have a brand name? It doesn't have a brand name, right? Do you have a dedicated account for this? There is none. So what she does is make money from it, and then it just goes back. Anything that comes up. Have you seen people with roadside shops? Eh? Uh, so when they want to drink tea in the morning in the house, they go there and carry lip tea from there. Eh? <laughs> There's no record anywhere, right? So if it is time to buy something for the house, you just go there, dip your hand inside the place. And, and then later on you say, ah, but ah, this is my capital is going down. It has to go down because there's no depth of soil. 
Am I making sense to you? Yeah? You are deploying the seed, but there's no soil. There's no, there are some hard ground under. Hard ground of all the competing, you know, issues of life. School fees is due. You dip your hand, there's a, a mixture. The business is you, you are the business. Right? So there's no differentiation. That gift will die. That gift will die. And that's how some of these gifts have died. Right? So what I'll be challenging you to do, you do talking. Because I just looked at you and I suspected you. Hmm? What we are talking about is, how do you now build something around this talking? Get a stage name for the talk. Does he have already? See. So what's holding you now? Oh, uh -huh. don't worry. We'll come back to you. Mm. And this is, this is very, very common. Did you hear what he told me? What is holding him is his career. What's your career? Are you serious? Now you are loaded though. You have this, you have that. Oh, wow. But I eat this morning, Moabi. Okay, I, I now understand. Eh? He's already making mega money from IT. <laughs> you receive it. <laughs> you receive the mega part. All right. All right. So, but, but get the point. If you don't build something to sustain it, it will die. Because the foundation is so shallow. Does it make sense? Please, does it make sense? All right. So go to the third one. And um, Sorry? Okay, are we together? How many have I covered? Those who say is one, raise your hand so that we can. If I've covered only one in your own year, let's. Okay. So everyone is fine. We have done two, right? We've looked at the roadside seeding. And we've looked at the shallow soil seeding. So we now go to the turn one, Abby. All right. Now, I've decided to call the turn one. I'm going to borrow something straight. From the marketing textbook. So let's call this third one, the third one. Let's call it the Red Ocean Seeding. And I will explain to you. Red Ocean. Now, if an ocean turns red, what is happening? Some things are killing some other things. Yeah? Because this talks about thorns that are choking. Choking. All right. So there are two parts to it. Sometimes we have our seed, but we deploy it in very toxic environments. Yeah? Let me give you an example. Anything you do out of a sense of competition, sometimes it doesn't go too far. So I've got a gift, and let's use something that a number of us are familiar with here. So um, I open a church. So I have, a, I have a leading to open a church. And I'm asking myself, which road in Enugu, where are the churches? Because you want to also be, so there's a church road. Right. <laughs> in your studies, you found out that there are certain church roads, or, or, or maybe that environment, that's for the higher mighty, so let's set up the church there. Now, without consulting the unique and peculiarities that are yours, all yours, yeah? Without consulting, 
where is my target market audience? Right? And where can I easily access them? So I'm doing this because other people are doing it. Can I tell you something? Each time you are deploying a pro, so you are in IT, right? So I, I, a group of young people, you know, contacted me recently and they, uh, they want to, they create, they, they built an app. Or they are building, I don't know which one. And they want to get into the credit card space. Credit card. Sir, credit card. The credit card space in Nigeria. And guess where their studies are coming from? They are studying credit cards in the U.S. Right? And trying to deploy credit card in Nigeria based on studies of credit cards in the U.S. You know, it's it, it, credit, sub, you know, credit cards, sub, da, 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 and they did all that, uh, and then they shared with me. And um, the first question I asked them, do you know the history of credit card in Nigeria? Right? Do you know the bank that launched the first credit card in Nigeria? What was their experience? Okay? Because they burnt their finger and then burnt their arm. Right? So they almost burnt their chest. They want to name the bank. Because they gave credit in an environment where the credit culture is very poor. Right? And then credit cards are like, I'm giving you, so I give you a limit. I have a credit card with some very huge limit. Right? So I give you a limit of two million. In other words, you can go and spend, you can go on a spending spree. And then money you don't have. And then you pay, you know, after the billing circle, you know, there's a billing circle that you pay, right? Now, it happens well in an environment where there is clear structures. The system is watertight. In fact, if they give you a bad credit rating, you are finished in those environments. Not here. Even with BVM, people are circumventing things. You can cut the money and go and keep it in your house. Do you understand? And so you... you you carry this gift and you are deploying it in a toxic environment, in an environment with excessive competition. Because the first question we want to ask you, if you say you want to go into real estate business today, and let's say in Enugu here, there are about 100 people who are already doing real estate, we'll be asking you a simple question. What is different? Are you hearing me? What is it that you are bringing to the table that is different from what all the others are already providing? If you can't answer that question confidently, then you don't have a business. Are you understanding me? So we hear that you are, ah, this kind of business is thriving here, and so we jump into it. Um, let me tell you something. What you find is that the thorns they are not after your fruit. The thorns are after your roots. Who will scatter you. Scatter you. Price you out of the market. Yeah? Swarm the market with some kind of, you know, offers and promos and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, you have put in so much to build a structure. You are gone. You are gone. Go and ask those who try competing with Dangote in some spaces. Yeah? You have a very beautiful product. Fine product. Very solid product. They are not after your fruit. They, it's, not about, it's not about those wonderful fruit. They will destroy the foundations of your business. Yeah? Have you noticed in the parable where a man sowed um, wheat, right? And then white men slept, an enemy came and sowed tears. Do you remember that parable? You know, I used to wonder, why did Jesus say, let's leave two of them to keep growing? <laughs> it was a matter of roots. You know what has happened? The tears and the wheat have developed roots. And the roots have become tangled intertwined with themselves. So if you try pulling up the tears, you will also be destroying the wheat. 
All right? So what the turning ground does is it destroys the fundamentals of what you are doing. You don't choose a career because that's where, I mean, that's the, that's the in thing. What's the in thing today? Is IT, have you? My friend, who is over 50, told me the other day that he's trying to learn. Uh, <laughs> UI UX design. <laughs> he's trying to learn how to build websites. I saw that. So <laughs> I said, I salute your courage. Good luck. Okay? Yeah. I, I would rather use that time and learn something something else, right? They're going to learn. I can buy that. Can get people that have that to come and work for me. Yeah? But I can't go and start competing in a space where you know you have comparative, very comparative disadvantage. <laughs> Massive comparative disadvantage. Right? Okay, so let's leave that matter. So, we've talked about the roadside seating. What's the next one? And then the next one. Fantastic. I wanted to hear somebody say, turn, turn the ground seating. Then I'll come for your head. All right? Red ocean. And by the way, so we break that down. So it, in marketing, we talk about the blue ocean, right? Uh-huh. So green areas where you have massive advantage. In five years, enter there, you may be like, you are the guru, right? Yeah. There are certain things that, you know, people are doing in Enugu here. If you took it to a bakeleke, you become a big man. All right? Because the competition is so high here, but there's lower competition elsewhere. Do you understand? So we call that place a green ocean. And we call this place, a blue ocean rather, and we call this place that has bloody competition, we call it red ocean. Okay? Mm. All right. So we'll go to the last one. And the last one, obviously, is, so we call it niche seeding. Niche sitting. What do you call niche? Is that what you wanted to hear? Niche. And I see a chi. Yeah. So this is where the rice seed meets the rice soil. Yeah? Like we said, it's not a matter of bad soil. It's a matter of right soil. Right soil. Right soil. Yeah? So, there are certain things that grow in certain places. Am I making sense? Yeah. One of my young men is into agri, agri technology, actually. It's somewhere in or your state. How many of you, when you want to do farming, you do what they call soil test? Do you do that? Hello? Yeah, you do soil testing, right? To find out whether this kind of crop can grow in this kind of soil. Yeah? Normally you go there, take soil samples and so on and so forth. Uh, but IT, IT is amazing. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Very creepy what's happening with AI now. Honestly. Honestly, very creepy. Very creepy. You know these screens will soon, in the next few years, you won't have these screens. Are you aware? Huh? Including these phones that all of you are falling over. You, these things are going out. Yeah? So you want to take a call? They are going to implant systems. All right? So my, <laughs> my NTN line is wired to my body. So hello, Pazon Dukwe. How are you? <laughs> And the video will come out. <laughs> Are you hearing? Okay, you don't know. Oh, you know. And the video will come out. I'll be seeing him on my pap. <laughs> just, just like this. <laughs> okay. So this young man, listen up here now. So this young man is somewhere in Oyo State. Oyo? In a village in Oyo. I won't mention. A village in Oyo. But let me give you an expo. It's a village where the CJN comes from that village. 
the chief justice of Nigeria, his village. That's where this young man is. And he stays there by GPS. He can do soil tests in any part of Nigeria. Yeah? He can test the soil in your village from Oyo and tell you what can grow and what cannot grow there. <laughs> All right? All right. So, we are talking about right soil, not bad soil. Yeah? And so once you find that, you will see that things will start growing. He said he grew, he developed, and then he produced. He produced. He produced. Sometimes we don't produce to the optimum because we are not in the right soil with all the things to encourage and support what you are doing. Yeah? I don't believe everyone must come to Lagos to be able to do well. Are you hearing me? Don't run away. From, where are you based? Enugu here. Don't run away from Enugu. The temptation has become very right. Anybody wants to do very well. Uh -huh, remember the word. And you were here when I was looking for a word for IT companies, that technology companies that uh, are one billion in market capital. We call them unicorns. <laughs> oh, he wasn't here then. Oh, you are discharged and acquitted. All right. We call them unicorns. Right? And I hope you'll build the next unicorn. The point is this. The, the thinking is always that you need to leave this area. And a lot of the people who are doing that are from the east, in Lagos, a number of them. But there's a feeling that the east here doesn't support that. Because when it even comes to venture capitalists, right, they just concentrate on Lagos. That's where they give people you know, all the funding. So people think they have to relocate from here and go to Lagos for that to happen. And Lagos is getting choked. So we are thinking of how do we, instead of moving the IT companies from here, how do we move the uh, either angel investors or the venture capitalists to come here and then see how we develop the East. All right? Okay. All right. Let's pause. I want you to have a conversation with your friend again. Um, where do you think your gift is at this point? Just have that conversation. Open, very honest conversation with your friend. Is this something that you could have turned up? Where is it located in this spectrum, these four areas? Have that conversation. I'm seeing people who are sitting together. You two of you are looking at me. Let me come down and catch you. You don't know how to talk. Yeah, talk to him. From this four, oh yeah, maybe either a, a gift you know, a gift you know, yeah, that God has given you. Where can you place it? All right. All right. It wasn't supposed to be a long discussion. It's just being honest. This is my gift. And today is in a shallow soil. Mm -hmm. So that we can now start thinking of how to move it out of there. Okay. Am I still in charge? One, please keep quiet. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is this helping anybody at all? Yes. Okay. Now, what I want to do, there are people who have actually put their seed in the right soil and is growing and they are getting. 
fivefold, tenfold, even thirty, forty. I want to speak to you in the next few minutes that are remaining about getting into full measure. Somebody say full measure. Full measure. Now write it down because I mean that's this whole conversation about you know enlargement and expansion. It's about full measure. What you are doing today, are you hitting the optimum? And this optimum has to do with timing also, right? At this stage of your life and this stage of that business, that career, that whatever you are doing, yeah? Are you hitting the best you can hit? Yeah? Are you seeing the best manifestation of that business, of that career, of that ministry? God gives us, we are all anointed. We are all anointed. But the thing is about how you grow in that anointing, how you grow that anointing. Am I making sense to you? There are people that are operating at a very low level of the graces God has released upon them. Yeah? So you notice as that parable closes, it talks about the measures. So what I want to do is to help you. If there's a way we can push ourselves a little more so that we move into higher measures, higher measures of our calling, higher measures of our business, higher measures of our professions, higher measures of our leadership. Now, this is very important. Because in the end, if I am capacitized, I hope I got the English word, if I'm capacitized for a hundred measure and I'm delivering 30, that's a fail mark. All right? So, you sing and you write stuff. If locked inside you are a thousand songs, yeah? And today, you are at 50. Now, what's the percentage? Now, that's, that's, that's a problem. It's important that we are able to know the elements that will help us, you know, push into a fuller measure. You can max out in a day, but there are expectations per time. Please, am I, am I making sense to you? So I'm not trying to, you know, um, create that impression that I mean you, you, no. It doesn't work that way, right? It's a journey. It's a journey. And it's important that in each slice, you are able to account for that level. And we say that in, in two years' time, this is the movement we have been able to make. Yeah? There has been progress. Significant progress. All right? So, to do that for you, I'm going to again go to another story of Jesus. <laughs> Very interesting how a number of the things that uh, the world put in their curriculum in business schools they are all here. They are all here. I keep seeing them. They are here. Somebody said they are here. Yeah. <laughs> they are all here. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through another parable. So put for us Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. We're going to look at the first three verses. Mark 12, 1 to 3. Mark 12, 1 to 3. All right. Look up here. So it says, Then Jesus began teaching them with stories. A man planted a vineyard. Listen. A man planted a vineyard. Next. He built a wall around it. Next. Dug a pit for pressing out the grapevine. Next. And built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to, the, to tenant farmers and moved to another country. Go on. 
at the time of the great harvest, he sent one of his servants to collect his share of the crop. Next. But the farmers grabbed the servant, beat him up, and sent him back empty-handed. Stop. <laughs> Very interesting story. Okay. And we're talking about full measure. What elements will help you move what you are doing to another phase? Okay? So let's start. This story starts very interestingly. It says a man planted a vineyard. He planted a vineyard. Now, it stands to reason that there are some back-end things we do before planting. There are certain preparatory things we do, right? So I would have acquired, a, you know, farmland, blah, 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 and all that, conceived of it. So, you know, any one of you who is into business, you're a businessman? Eh? You're into, or you're in a career? Who is a businessman here? Who is a businessman? You don't know what to call yourself. <laughs> eh? Are you a businessman? Yeah, he has lost his voice. <laughs> you have a crisis of identity. <laughs> All right, who is a businessman? Plain, pure. All right, good. Now, every business starts with ideation. Am I correct? Hello. Every business starts with what? Ideation. Right? So I... I I get the idea. I build a framework. I, I know. So this is how it's going to. So they call you to come and do a pitch. You can do a PowerPoint presentation on it. Is that not correct? You can say where the monies are going to come from. You can say what you need to do. You can say what it's going to cost. You can say the number of personnel that are required. Is that not how it's done? So it starts with ideation. So for this man to be able to plant that vineyard, there was number one element. There was ideation. Correct? There was ideation. And, and see, ideation is very critical. Because if you get the ideation right, yeah, chances are that if you put a few other elements properly in place, you'll do well. Let me give you an example. So, I was, um, I was talking with some IT guys. I, I keep coming because I have a very serious interest in IT. Um, so I was talking with some IT guys who were working on a product. And we talked and talked and talked. You know what I told them? You may find out in your experience. I said, technology, building solutions with technology. It is 90% understanding the business case, understanding the problem, and 10% technology. That's the truth. That is the truth. The technology piece is the easier part. All right? But understanding the problem you want to solve and understanding what needs to be done to solve that problem, that is where the issue is. Am I, am I making sense? Okay. You know, he's the guru here. I'm, I'm just, I'm an outsider who watch what they do. So if I'm building a solution for a business, I need to first of all understand the pain points in the business and how to solve those pain points. Technology is just a platform that enables that happen in a more convenient, automated way. Correct? Anywhere I miss it, you just call me to order. And so ideation is very powerful. So it starts with that. Sometimes our businesses have problems, careers, because we didn't think them through. You didn't think it through properly. Right? So the first challenge I want to put before you, think it through. Think through the ministry. Think through what you've been asked to come and do. Right? If I'm entering a city, I need to do a proper mapping. You know what they call mapping? Proper mapping. I need to understand the city. So God calls me now and sends me, go plant a church where? Where should I plant this church now? In Kafanchan, right? Go plant a church in Kafanchan. It's important I understand Kafanchan. It's important I understand even what we call spiritual mapping, right? 
How was a city founded? Blah, blah. All of those, I need to understand it. What are the nuances? What are the cultural peculiarities? And so on and so forth. I need to understand all that. And then what kind of solution will I be bringing? Where are the gaps? What am I coming to solve? And how am I going to solve it? So ideation in every area. You know people just jump into a career. They don't even understand what they are going into. But that's because we are in a system where there is so much poverty. So we understand it. There's so much poverty. So people don't think through what they are entering into. So you just, you just want to get out of the house, which is fair, right? But make allowance in your heart, if it is fair, make allowance in your heart to meet unexpected things there. Yeah? So I just got this sales job. Uh, something, 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 insurance company wants a, so I go, right? Just remember, uh, they are going to be telling you that they are going to pay you on commission. That is as you sell, you earn. Eh? Earn as you sell. Yeah? And so there are going to be a lot of issues. And so from the get-go, I need to understand what I'm stepping into. Anyone who wants to build a house will do what? He will first of all sit down and count the cost. Yeah? So ideation is very, very critical. The next thing, of course, is that things will need to leave paper and start getting interpreted on ground. Right? So whatever you want to call it, the startup process, incubation, even though incubation has, you know, um, some other connotations. But there has to be that, you know, a period where you are putting things on the ground and you are watching over it and so on and so forth. So that's what we find back end, what this man has done. So he builds, he builds, he plants a vineyard. He plants a vineyard. But where my interest is, can you show me that scripture again? Let's walk to that verse one. There are certain pillars that we find there. Yeah? Let's look at them. Now, can you just put verse 1? Uh, thank you. Now, it says he planted a vineyard. What's the next thing he does? He built a wall around it. <laughs> now, we can stay on this. He built a wall around it. Now, why is he building a wall? So that if this wall is here, we can differentiate, distinguish this from this. He branded it. <laughs> All right? He developed procedures. This is what is allowable in this business. This is what is not allowable in this business. Am I making sense to you? All right? In the companies where you work, there are procedures, Abi. There are processes. There's a way to do X and the way to do Z. In kingdom diplomas, there are processes. Am I correct? There's a way we do things here. Different from perhaps how it is done elsewhere. So that nobody comes in and there's a sense of confusion. Are you understanding? You know, every institution has a character. I can tell you, I know the character of this place. I'm, I'm, I keenly observe. Because we go to other places, there are things that people do elsewhere that I've found that here, it is not done. Because there is order. Are you understanding? There is order. And I understand it. I, I come in and I see it. I know, uh, you see, there is there's a system in place here. All right? So that's what this man took time to do. There was ideation. There was the incubation stage. And then he starts building systems. He starts building structures. He did a branding to make what we are doing distinctive. He built a wall around it. Walls of control. Are you understanding? So what you are doing today, what control mechanisms have you built around that business? Around the institution you are running? What controls are there? How are things done? You know, somebody wakes up and then uh, uh, a staff of your company or your church or whatever wakes up and, and doesn't show up for work. Right? And then the next day he calls you and says, uh, sorry, I was sick. You know why that will happen? And you are thinking, what should I do? Right? You are not together. Because before you hire the person, the company needs to have procedures. What is our human resource policy? How do we handle? If a man is sick, he needs to call in. After calling, he needs to present a medical report. 
a doctor's report to validate. It is not because we are not a human organization. It is because we want things done orderly so that people don't take advantage of the system. Are you understanding? How our expense is made, it needs to go through these lines of approval so that nobody just wakes up and moves into the market like the way they do in Nigeria. You know, just buys something, yeah, and gives us a bill, okay? He can be buying from himself for all you care. Then if you are buying from yourself, you price it anything you want to price it, right? So we have... We have a process to deliver on that. Please, is this making sense? So you need to be asking yourself, in the small thing you are running, don't think about today, think about tomorrow. And some of those policies are not made because of the human beings who are there today. Because the human beings may change tomorrow. You may be dealing with a very honest person, and you just um, uh, want to buy some sort of thing. Okay, um, we don't know the price, so carry this 50000 Just go. I, I know now, you, when you come back, you account. Tomorrow... Brother Judas may take over from him. Right? And then you are finished. Okay? So that's why you need to build a wall. Go back to that scripture, please. Saoma. You have to build a wall. What's the next thing? He, he said, he dug a pit for pressing out the grape, the grape juice. <laughs> this is very interesting. <laughs> what is he trying to do here? The simple question is this. In planting a vineyard, what we want to come out ultimately, it is this juice. And this juice carries a very massive image. In a business, you know there's juice. Every business has juice. Everybody say cash. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the juice. Yeah? Cash is the blood of a business. Blood. Yeah? That's the life. So what is this guy doing here? He built market access. You know, sometimes our problem is how to convert our gift to cash. Convert your passion to cash. He built a system that will enable a conversion to cash. Okay, I don't know whether this is making sense. Do you know that being gifted in music, sir, we'll come back to you. Being gifted in music and all of that, it doesn't necessarily convert to cash. It is now, what is it that we need to put in place? What products do we need to churn out? That's what this guy was doing. And then there is a commercial path to it. So we build this product. These are how we gain access to market. These are the platforms we are going to use. All right? Because often we don't think through that. What platforms are we going to use to present this to the market and so on and so forth. You need to create that path. So I don't just come and then I, I, I say I'm, I, I buy an oven and then I start baking. Right? After baking, how is it going to be sold? Yeah? What is your distribution strategy? How are you going to distribute? What is your pricing strategy? There are others who are already selling in the market. Right? How am I going to gain an entrance? How am I going to do that? You need to work all that. This man took time. He dug it. He dug it. So that the juice may come out. Um, what's the next one? He built a lookout tower. Do you know what a, a lookout tower is? So, so this is the vineyard planted. And then he builds a lookout tower. What's a lookout tower for? It is to check whether they are advancing marauders. It is market sensitivity. Right? So I don't just start my business. I have my ears to the ground. I need to know what is happening in the environment. You know, a lot of people are just stuck in their small thing that they are doing. They don't know the macro issues happening in the economy. What are the things that are going to happen that will affect this business? Are you understanding? Is there a government legislation that is about to come out? And how do you position yourself either to take advantage of it or to avoid being swamped by it? What are the trends? In this kind of business, are there circles okay, that we normally experience in this business? Right? So every five years, certain market shakeups happen. So how do we prepare? We call it business resilience. How do you build a business re resilient system so that when the shocks come, you are able to hold, hold on? Am I making sense to you? Am I talking above your head? Okay. 
Okay. So that's what this guy did. He understood trends, historical trends, future trends. What's this business going to look like in the next five years? What's the industry going to look like? He's studying competitors. So I'm a hairdresser. Do I know what other hairdressers are doing? How often do I do a market sensitization? How often do I do that? How often do I find out the latest trends that are coming? Am I in a place where I can get all those information? Am I making sense? <laughs> all right? So you piece all this together to secure the business, not just for its good manifestation today, but for a better manifestation tomorrow. Yeah? Okay. I need to stop. The final thing. Let me ask you a question. This vineyard, did the owner get value from it? Please answer me. No. After all these things that were done, it ends in verse 3 by saying that he sent his staff to go and collect his own share. The people there beat him up, and then the man went back empty-handed. If you read that, he even sent his son. I mean, that's... Uh -huh. And they killed him. <laughs> okay. So what is the problem here? He did every other thing right, but there was one missing link. Where is the missing link? He planted all this, and then he handed it over to tenant farmers and took off. What he missed was what we call leadership presence. Leadership presence. Listen. Listen carefully. Particularly for small businesses. That's why those who are in careers. Have you ever been in a career and you are trying to say, for the rainy day, just in case this work, I lose it. Let me start a small business by the side and put somebody there. My brother, have you tried it? <laughs> in fact, you pick somebody from church. Right? And they will mess you up big time. All right? Now, it is important that you are there. And therefore, it's important if you are doing a business, whatever small idea you have, and you are still at work, do something that enables you to have oversight. Create a system that enables you to have oversight. That's my point. You know, the question is this. Um, are there so market chains here? ShopRite is here, right? How many branches of ShopRite do we have in Nigeria? Anybody knows? Okay. Who are the owners of ShopRite? Do you see them in the shop here? Are you, are you understanding where I'm going to? But the issue is that there is a presence you are not seeing. The system has been programmed so strongly that the owners see what is going on. They know. They are not there. I have a friend who run, has um, a filling station chain across Lagos and elsewhere. Big filling station. Right from his office, he sees what goes on in all the stations. He sees. They build their system that watertight. Because, because, if your people see that you are absent, they will do to you what people do to absent leaders. They will ruin the place. A lot of us have this standoff issue just, you know, so you set it up and then uh, yeah, you are waiting for return. In fact, they, <laughs> particularly for supermarket business, <laughs> we're doing a review, eh? Uh, my brother, you know, some of these big supermarkets that are not properly being run, they are making money. You know the philosophy? If what I'm making is higher than what they are stealing, I'm okay. I'm telling you. Do you know a POS can be delivered in a supermarket 
and it's not configured to the account of the supermarket. <laughs> okay, a lot, right? And so that's why those systems of controls are very important. But more importantly, you need to assert your presence. Whether it is a virtual presence or a physical presence, you need to assert yourself. And by the way, I want to encourage you. Don't play a big man. I mean, get down and dirty your hand. Get involved. That's the point I'm making. Be available for what you are running. Even in career, this is also the same thing. You don't leave your career to HR people to decide. All right? Be present in your career. Decide what you want and start working towards that. That's how to be present. Don't just say, okay, well, whenever they want. No, it's not when they want. You have a role to play. It is in your hands. If you need to be present and show face everywhere, create impressions that make people remember you. You know, I've told you people here before. You know, you don't enter an elevation with uh, your, your MD, whoever is the owner of the company. You enter an elevator with a man, and, and you are like this. You, you bend down like this to respect him. You're not going anywhere in your career if you do that. Business owners are looking for bold, audacious, ambitious people. Are you understanding? You look him square in the face and ask him a few questions that will keep his brain, you know, running and saying, who is this? Are you understanding? Don't leave things to someone else. They will manage it badly for you. Am I talking to you? You know, the Christian people, we are so... Humility is not timidity. Did you hear me? Humility is not timidity. Ask questions. Do something. Yeah? Don't let, don't let what you are doing, you know, the, how far you go. It's someone else that will take all the decision. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. Can I tell you, in your, in your professional life, eh, at a stage in your work, it is not so much about what you do, but about the impressions you create. This is true. This is the truth, sadly. Yeah? Because you must not just be hardworking. You must be seen to be hardworking. It's just that we are Christians, so we don't do, we don't go and, uh, you know, do mago mago, so we are not working. We create an impression that we are working. Then that you're a sinner. Right? It is that you are working, but also let your work be seen. There were simple tricks we used to learn in those days. So, you do a particular initiative that has helped the institution. Eh? Just drop a note to your boss as if you don't know that he already knows. Eh? And give him a report of what has just been done. So, I was able to do this. These are the outcome. This is what has come in for the company because of that. This is the impact it's going to have. Just drop that note. Yeah? And so someone else who, maybe, who is a Puritan will be saying, uh, is he not, you know, trying to... Because if you don't do it, nobody will blow your trumpet for you. They won't. It's a bloody environment. Right? Sometimes decisions about who gets promoted, who gets rewarded, is 60% impression and 40% what you do. At a stage. Not at some of your rookie stages, though. At that rookie stage, where you're just entering, my friend, just be a hard worker. Be a hard worker. <laughs> Let them be seeing you everywhere. Volunteer for everything. Work hard. You're an ox. That's how you start your career. Be an ox. Yeah? From there, you graduate from an ox to an owl. We call owl. From an ox to an owl where you now use your brain more than your sweat. So you are now looking at how things are done in the company and you're asking, how can we do it differently, right? You do some process re-engineering, come up with some ideas, let's change this and make it more effective. You are engaging from here, not from muzzle. Alright? From there, you turn to a fox. A fox is a political animal. 
you now know how to do stakeholder engagement. You now know how to get things from your big bosses. You now know how to speak political language without sinning. No, it's true. That's where all these things are about now. Creating the impressions, you know, good impressions about what you are doing. You know, send notes about, you know, just take some time. Even if they don't ask you, quarterly you send them a report. These are the, all the achievements I've made. Honestly, I'm telling you, Sometimes you request for a session with your boss. Say, sir, I, I just want 30 minutes of your time. I want to walk you through a few things. You sit down with him in a meeting. Tell him all the things are going well. Tell him the areas you're having some concerns. And tell him some suggestions, what you think should. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Am I making sense to anybody? I know it feels uncomfortable, but that's how. You see, the people in the world, they are as wise as serpent. They are smarter than some of you. You do the work, they take the glory. I'm telling you, they will do it. All right? So please, make sure all these pillars are in place. From ideation to incubation, put controls in place, create strong access and channels and distribution strategies and so on and so forth. You know, have, an, have a clear system that helps you track what is going on in the market. What are the market trends? What's coming on in the future? What's, what's been before? What are the likely impact? What kind of resilient systems are we building? And please, more importantly, be present. Clap for me. Okay. Has this been any helpful? All right. Is there any question? Any question? Huh? On... Uh -huh. So this last bit I've been talking about career. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So he's asking. So you are already in a career, and then you have some side passions, right? Um, so what do you do? Now, I'll be very honest with you. It depends on the path you want to follow in the future, right? Some are so good in what they are doing that you need to turn this IT thing from working for somebody to working for yourself where the IT company now becomes your own. Otherwise, know that one day you will leave that company and still have to come and do your own thing, right? So unless that career path you've chosen is what you want to do with your life ultimately, i.e. you can now build something of your own in that area, that's fine, right? Otherwise, if it is something you are going to leave someday, and I'm not talking generally, you need to gradually start giving, I call it power, start giving time and power. What makes things grow? There are two elements, time and power, right? Start giving some little more time to the side thing. Yeah, like start building a structure around, um, you know, the, the, what do you call that? Public speaking area, right? Start building a structure around it. Uh, uh, even train people online. I mean, there are so many things. You know, technology is amazing these days, right? You can create a, a learning session for people who want to blah, 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 blah. And then, and start putting yourself out there gradually. So you give it some time, give it some power. Power is investment, right? Start investing in it. Maybe there are some PR things you need to do around it. You need to acquire certain things and blah, 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 blah. Start giving it some small power and time by the side. That is if you are going to ultimately pivot from what you're already doing, right? But if it's an, also an area of passion, you can actually train people who do it and you create a company and empower people. All right? So you're still doing your IT thing, but you have this public speaking stuff that runs by the side. It's a company of its own. There's a manager there. You are involved in, in some sense, right? Because again, it doesn't conflict with your IT job. Okay? You just create it and put people there, empower them, and the thing is growing all by itself. Who says that people don't run to come? How many companies does Dangote have? Think about that. Does that answer? All right. Two more questions. Yes. Where is a lady that wants to ask a question? 
I'm taking two more questions. One from a man and one from a woman. Do we sell your slot, ladies? This is a question. Is it from a lady? Another man. Come, ladies. You are anointing only in the kitchen. I hope you okay. Uh, stand up too. All right. So let's give the mind first of all to the one behind. Give to the young man behind. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you so much for the section, sir. I really got so much value, and that was why I, I decided I must ask this question. Okay, sir, um, for someone who's running a business that has gone from, you know, um, having presence just in our country of residence to being present in about 30 countries. Now, you talked about being present at where your business operates. Now, that thing has been something that has been holding us back. You know, we did a little marketing the other time, and we were able to grow to over 35 countries. African countries and some European countries. Now, the issue I've been having is, it's not just about we now coming into these countries. How do we begin to expand and be present in those companies? Let me take, for instance, um, platforms like Udemy and Coursera. Now, there are platforms who are owned by um, international bodies, which are present in different countries. Then, even the fact that they don't have offices, despite the fact they don't have offices in those countries, there's still a way you feel like Coursera is, is a company you can find in Nigeria. You feel like Udemy is a country you can still find in Nigeria. And that is where we are having issues now. Now, we've, we've had, like, our key, our, our KPI for knowing which countries we have presence is um, by our users who are from those, those countries. countries. Yes. So we've, 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 we've come into these countries now, but we don't know how to begin to now expand and be present, even though we don't have offices in those um, countries yet. All right. That's a brilliant question. What did you say? No, don't worry. I know what I'm going to do to him. Trust me. All right. Now, um, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a little insight. Um, managing locally is different from managing internationally, right? Uh, there are parts of global business, you know, understanding that you need to have if you must play in those areas. Now, one tip will be. Coursera is an online platform. And so there are no borders, really. Yeah? Yeah. So all you need to do, if you now need to start growing your presence in specific markets, so you have some users and they are, they are moving very astronomically. They jump from 50, 1,000, and it's just going like that. Would then be, is it possible to start um, running some online ads around those environments? create certain, I mean, funnels that can trap people around that environment. And IT technology enables you to do that. You can target that area, right? And create those kind of things that can enable more people in that environment see what you are doing, and then they are coming into your net, right? And you grow it patiently. It hits a point where you now begin to realize you may need a local partner there, all right? Or set up a representative office there. Okay? We have a number of such companies rising out of Nigeria. I'm telling you. Right? People that they just started in Nigeria and then it's, it's now spreading to other places. And your home may even be different if it's IT-led. Some of these ones are not, it's not like something you can just assess. You actually need a physical person to help you with something. That's where it even gets a bit more interesting because you now need to find partners or collaborators in those environments. All right? I don't know whether this is making sense so far. So you need to check. So where are the opportunities? Again, studying those markets. Where are the opportunities? In terms of demography, the kind of people that are potentially going to be using your services, what are the quantums across? Are there local regulations that may hinder or enhance what you are doing? You need to start having a look around all that. Right? And can I advise you? Hire a consultant. All right? Small businesses often don't like paying money. But hire a consultant, they will take you through all of that. They will take you through. Because a consultant knows who to talk to where. I can get all the information for you. All right? And guide you and, and hold you through that process. Okay? You wanted me to say you should talk to me. <laughs> all right. Aha. Okay, so there's a lady. Yes. 
Okay, so my question is this. What do you do when you feel like you're gifted in a lot of things? That so many people tell you, oh, you're good at this, you're good at that. Do you, are you, should you pursue all of those things? Or is there, should there be a choice? And if there is a choice, what should inform your decision? Okay, this is what I'm going to leave. And this is what I am going to pursue. Let's clap for her. Very interesting. So I can sing, I can act drama, I can preach. What else can you do? I can do makeup. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So I'm, I'm going to let's answer it in, in um, maybe two or three ways. There's something called essentialism, right? Essentialism. So one very simple yardstick is to ask yourself, what should I be doing? What is the most important thing I should be doing with my life now? <laughs> I know people don't often ask that. So anything that just comes, you, you're wrong with it. But you get to that stage where you need to decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do. So that could be a good starting point. I list all the things that I'm able to do and ask myself, and there are certain elements that come into it. It's something that resonates with me very strongly, and I know if I'm doing this, I make the most impact with this thing. So what's the most essential? Right? That may be a starting point for me. Because, have you noticed that there are studies that have now proven that this thing they call multitasking. You know what they call multitasking? Uh, so women used to pride them. Women are very good in multitasking. It's not an advantage. It actually weakens the quality of your brain. Right? Even, yeah. Even, <laughs> even the quality of decisions you make about them gets lower. Hello, listen. Right? So it becomes important to know what is critical per time. Okay? And, you know, I, 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 your head is blocking that girl for me. Can you move to the next seat? You didn't have a question. Uh -huh. That's, he's a better, let him punish himself. Bend down like that. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I can feel you because in my space, you just find you can do so many things, right? But if you spread yourself too thin, too early, mark the things I've said. If you spread yourself too thin, too early, you may just realize that nothing is actually fully maximized, right? So normally it's better. Start with one thing, all right? Grow it to the point of stability. Get a name, right? Because your name will make the other ones happen faster. Do you get? So if I've already maximized myself in one other area, it's is the concept of the image transfer in marketing, right? So if we say Samsung is a good product, and Samsung produces a car today, right? Chances are that the image of Samsung as a strong mobile phone company will rub off on the car company. People will buy into it because of what they think about the other one. Do you understand? So I grew and maximized one thing, and then I've created that. It is there. It's easy to branch out to the other things. And by that time, people believe in you more, right? And so you can easily create teams around each of the things that you are doing. And you see that over time, they begin to do well. Just take a TDGX now, all right? He does multiple things. And he actually has the capacity to step into other things if he wants to. So you just get to that level where even people are now coming to give you passion to drive. <laughs> are you understanding? Yeah. Dangote says, and people make offers. People bring business and say, can you also go into this area? All right? So start with one. Try and maximize it. I mean, that's the only simplistic way I can say it. I'm not sitting where you are sitting. And uh, you may have your peculiarity. So it may be by the time you do your audit, it may be two that you may want to start with. But my recommendation is start with one, maximize it. Why not? You don't shut down the others. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying in terms of the quantum of time and power you give, give it to one and make it really happen and stand. And then you can take on the next one and the next and the next. And um, it just goes on like that. You are wearing glasses. Read for me. You can. 
Okay. This one says, in a case where you plant a business and you have a 10-year plan to cover 10 states with the strategies in place, if along the line in your second year you encounter challenges like accidents, in such a case, what do you do? All right. Did you hear the question? All right, so you have a 10-year plan uh, and you want to capture, move your business to various states. That's what he's saying. And then by second year of the 10-year plan, you encounter challenges including accidents. What do you do? Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah? What you do is, whatever has happened, learn from it. Find out what went wrong what should you have done that you didn't do? I <laughs> recently, I, um, a group I run, they wanted somebody to come and do a business training. Um, so I called one of my friends. I said, come and do a business training for my people. Um, and he's actually at this time grappling with like two or three businesses he started have scattered. And I'm asking him to come and do a business training for people. He said, what am I coming to teach them? <laughs> My own businesses have failed. I said to him, you're actually the right person to teach them. Because you know how not to run a business. <laughs> Are you understanding? Now, you see, the issue is not that an accident happened or some of the things you planned, the process didn't work out well. There must be a reason why they didn't work well, right? So you learn from it. All these companies you, you hear about, so they've been there for 150 years, 200 years. You know there are companies like that, right? They have failed many, many times over. Many, many times. But the secret is learning from all those things and then you craft how you tie, tighten things up, right? And move on and become a better company. So my request on you will be don't stop. You are just in the second year. That's 20% of the, of the way, right? Go back, recalibrate. Don't stop what you are doing. Learn from the few things you are not doing right. Fix them. And by the way, there must be a lot of things you are doing right already, right? So fix the ones that are not going well and then just keep moving, okay? God bless you. God bless you, everyone.